What's up, y'all? Welcome back. I'm Van. We are all the LFR family. All right, so we got this young man who's about to have a conversation with this young lady on the streets, and he is called Street Preaching Jesus to Young Lost Satanist. Let's hear what he has to say. Step on it and you break it, you're going to feel lighter. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. You don't have to go to the evil eye to feel peace. All you need to do is open up in prayer. And Jesus Christ, he'll come in and he'll show you his Holy Spirit. God, he'll protect you. Why go to a crystal? Did the crystal create you? God created you and he loves you. Jesus said in his word that he knows every single hair on your head. So Brenna, I'm here to tell you that by act of faith, if you smash it, that weight of, of depression and heaviness will go away. I guarantee you. Yeah, they seemed like he was, uh, you know what I mean? They was listening, but... You know, I I don't know what else is coming from that. Yo, yo, this is harassment. Raise your hand if you're a good person. What's this young man name? Guys, we out here in Times Square. I'm with my brother Alex. What's going on, y'all? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, we fulfilling the Great Commission. You know, we saving souls. Times Square. I haven't been in New York in a minute. We out here in Jesus' name. We gotta face the truth. Oh yeah, thank you. Put your trust in the things of this world. No wonder you jogging from Satan. Yeah, I'm the little homie, but I'm big Brody when it comes. Hold up, hold up. Hey man, come here real quick. I have a quick question. It's very important. Yeah, you. Come here real quick. This is very serious. I like how I get people over to him like, hey, you, come here real quick. I got a quick question. It's very serious. Yeah, you, come here. <laughs> What's your name? It's real, it's real quick. We don't bite, we don't bite. This is real quick, come on. What's your name? Your name's Brenna? Step over here. You, Step up here. What's your name? Where are you from? Connecticut. Connecticut. So I want to ask you a quick question. So where do you get that necklace from? The blue one? A crystal shop. A crystal shop. And I want to ask you this. Like, what, what's the purpose of that? Does it, like, heal you? Does it give you peace? Like, how do you feel with that on? Protects me from evil. It protects you from evil. What is it called? Evil eye. An evil eye. So you're you're telling me that an evil eye protects you from evil? Well, I want to tell you something that that God showed me. That the evil eye, right? The reason why it's called the evil eye is because it invokes evil. So when you put it on, you're attracting evil. I want to ask you this. Brenna, Brenna, I want to ask you this real quick. Do you believe in the spiritual realm? So, do you believe that the spiritual realm consists of good and evil? Of course. Of course. So, let's say there's a stranger knocking on your door, right? And he's potentially good or evil. Would you let him in your, into your house? So, the spiritual realm, right, is more realer than this realm. And let's say you open a door in the spiritual realm, just like how the evil eye is. Anything could come in. A person that, a, a demonic spirit, you know, a good spirit, but mostly demonic. Because if that door is open, then anything could come in, Brenna. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like, so what's the difference? You said that you wouldn't let a stranger, potentially good or evil, into your house. So what's the difference between putting on um, an evil eye, opening that door in the spiritual realm for demonic spirits to enter? I want to offer you this, Brenna, real quick, real quick. My question to you, young man, okay, because I understand what he's saying. Here's, here's the thing I, I, I get, I get, okay. So the young lady is trying to express herself by wearing um, a crystal around her neck. Um, who's, whoever sold her that told her that um, it will protect her, all right? It will protect her from any evil. And he is asking her um, about inviting evil into her soul, into her house, into her spirit. Here's the thing. And this young man will find out one day. 
He will find out one day. Sometimes when we learn about God and we learn about many different things, we feel like, okay, we got the keys to go and break people down, which is not always the case. You know what I mean? Um, God is still working on that young man just like he's still working on that young lady. She decides to wear a stone around her, then she can wear a stone around her neck, okay? If she believes it to be something, then I believe it's also important for him to let her know the differences between, not a, not a conspiracy, but when, you're, when you believe in luck more than you are faith, when you, when you just think that if I don't, if, I, if, I'm, if, if it's two people walking together and we split a pole, then something bad might happen to us, so I need to come back around that pole and keep walking with you. Um, superstition superstition so he's telling her the importance of not having superstition over um over real spirituality here's the part though bro and i am a christian i am a christian i love the lord and if loving the lord is wrong i don't want to be right all right but we still have to respect somebody else's decision to Find religion and find spirituality the way they want to find religion and spirituality. Sometimes where we mess up is by forcing our own thoughts and feelings and faith on other people. And that right there ruins it for others. Like we believe we're helping, but what we're actually doing is putting them on. Um, we put, we're, we're putting the spotlight on them and we're embarrassing the people that we're trying, that we call ourselves being led by God to help. Because if you look inside the comments section of this video, I'm certain that because, you know, most of the people that watch his videos probably support him wholeheartedly. And they are probably going at the young lady or going at whoever else that he preaches against. And that's not what we're supposed to do, in my opinion. Okay. But I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. You're doing a great job. Um, so, yeah, let's check more out from this. I'll give you a hundred dollars if you break it right now. If you break it right now, all your witchcraft, if you break it and you show me proof, I will cash at you a hundred dollars. And that's the thing. What he's doing to her, see, and I get it. We are all Christians, but don't don't think for a minute that just because somebody is doing something that you don't agree with, that you're better than them or that you have a better understanding than them. What this gentleman just now did was he is testing her witchcraft that's what he's doing what if she tested his christianity would that be kosher seriously would that be kosher be honest with me be honest with me i would cash up you if you use your witchcraft to break something to break that rock to do this what if somebody says well if you believe in god so much use your christianity to do this and i will and i would give you a hundred bucks you don't have to prove your faithfulness for any to anybody you don't and I am on this gentleman's side. I just know that he's young and what he's giving out right now, he's saying, well, if this is true, then do this and I will cash out you $100. You can't do that with your faith in Christianity. So why would you do that with somebody else? Why would you get someone else to do it? That's being a hypocrite right there. It's not going to happen. It's, it's not going to happen. So if you can't do the same thing, then don't ask that from others. If you break it right now, but you have to throw every single crystal away and you have to send it on video. Because I, I love you and I, I love all of you guys and I want to see your soul saved. But I'm here to tell you that the evil eye is demonic. It will, it will drag you down to hell. Step on it. Step on it. It's witchcraft. The evil eye won't protect you. You see, the evil eye is evil for a reason because it invokes demons. You know, I guarantee you if you throw it out and you step on it and you break it, you're going to feel lighter. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. You don't have to go oh, like, to the like, evil eye to feel peace. I guarantee you, if you throw it down and you break it, you will feel lighter. Bro, you just don't lie to her. You cannot guarantee that. That's the part right there. Again, much respect to this gentleman, but that's the part. You cannot guarantee that. <laughs> How can you possibly guarantee that? All you need to do is open up in prayer. And Jesus Christ, he'll come in and he'll show you his Holy Spirit. God, he'll protect you. Why go to a crystal? Did the crystal create you? God created you and he loves you. Jesus said in his word that he knows every single hair on your head. So, Brenna, I'm here to tell you that by act of faith, if you smash it, that weight of, of depression and heaviness will go away. I guarantee you.
And if you send me a video destroying all your crystals, you, you can even look at my IG. I'm a YouTuber. I own a ministry. If you smash it, I'll, I'll send it a hundred, a hundred dollars. I'm a man of my word. I will. If you if you send a video crashing, smashing all your crystals, because it's demonic, you rebuke that. Because it's demonic. If you smash it, I will cash at you. You're a Satanist? What, what does Satan do for you? Step up here, big man. If, if you're a Satanist, set up. You know, Satanism is about Satanism. Satan himself. It's about your, like. Please step up. Satanism isn't about worshiping Satan. Uh, there are many Satanists that do worship Satan, but it's not a requirement. It's actually, it helps you get uh, legal rights. It, like, you know, I, I assume you know because it's kind of. I love that. I love lover of Jesus and humanity. I love what you just now said. She said, the problem with this is he is not converting her. And I don't know if he's trying to convert her, but he might be. So I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt. But it says, she says, um, um, lover of Jesus, uh, lover, lover of Jesus and humanity. The problem with this is he is not converting her. If she breaks the stone in the desire for money, there's no freedom in that. That's just trading one false God for another one. I promise you, you'll feel lighter. Break that, and I give you this money. I'm blessing you. I have a ministry. That's that. That that right there is is is. It's dangerous, young man. Like, I, I understand what you're doing. I respect what you're doing. I think it's awesome. Like, you're, you're on the front lines. You're out there. I can't, I can't criticize you. But when you make yourself public and the things you do, your videos and whatnot, then I can actually give my commentary. That's literally my job. <laughs> but I don't think it's conducive to any, anybody converting to Christianity, if that's what you're trying to do. Very big thing on social media that if you uh, say you're a Satanist, then you can get uh, an abortion in states where you're not really allowed to. So there are a lot of problems with that, and uh, it's about the message of being true to yourself and spreading basically like, doing what you are. It's 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 basically Christianity without the parts that have been shown in the past as possible weapons. They have the potential to use the weapons to control people. What, what's your name real quick? Lock. So I want to ask you this. Do you know the motto for the satanic church? Um, there's a few, but which one are you talking about? Have you heard of do what thy will? Yeah. So that's saying do what makes you happy. Do what you want. So let's say I was a satanist, right? And I'm like, you know what? I want to just shoot up 20 people, right? Would you stand for that? No, but there are other codes that... But, but, but hold up. That's do what thy will, though. Do what makes you happy. Let's say it made me genuinely happy. Is that good to do what thy will? It, it's not, but there's. you can't just pick one line out of uh, the you know all the different codes and try to say that that one line makes all Satanists bad. Because you could do the same thing for any religion. You could do the same thing for the Bible. I could pick out Bible verses and you would not be able to defend them without having to like bring up multiple other things. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like You can't just pull this one thing trying to be like Satanisms are bad because do what you want. But and I, I want to go kill somebody so I'm going to kill somebody. There's other codes saying that you shouldn't kill people. And young Buck. Um, now <clears throat> I'm listening to what the young guy is saying and he's defending Satan himself um, and I honestly have a clue as to why he would decide to do that that's just ridiculous as hell even here's the thing even knowing even knowing that even if let's say Satan does have like the most amazing religion out there that we don't know about because we're Christians We've never seen it. We, we probably never felt, they probably feel so free. You know what I mean? Whatever they're doing. But knowing what Satan represents, Satan being that minister of music who once worked under the Lord himself and went against God. And you're now saying that that's the person that I choose to worship. That's who I choose to worship. That right there is wrong. I don't care about everything else that comes from it. That's wrong. The person that you choose to worship is the one who went against God himself. That's who you choose to worship? The one who worked with them and then went against them. 
that's the one you choose to worship. Everything else you say is null and void at that point. It's like, what? What? But you're saying, and, and do without thy will, do what makes you happy. This is for the young and who's a Christian. He's saying it's bad to do what makes you happy. What do you mean you're doing what makes you happy? You're supposed to do what God says makes you happy. No, you're supposed to do what makes you happy. But you're supposed to also let God lead you in life. Let God lead you, but still do what makes you happy. You can, you can do it all. You can, as long as it's not against God and his commandments and his will, you let his will be done, but you do what make you happy. That's called free will, right? How many people are you and do you really believe, young man, that people are only doing what God says to do? Huh? Most people don't even know what God's voice sound like. Most people don't understand when they're being told by God to do a thing. Most times when we're being told by God to do a thing, it's something that we feel like we're either not, in, um, not capable of doing, we're not strong enough to do, or we just don't want to do it because it's just completely against every single thing that we feel like doing at the time. So it's a whole lot to look at when we talk about this conversation right here. But, you know, they're both young. That's all I can say. They are both young. Then that's bad. It's not saying that it's good to kill people. It's just about knowing that you should do what you want. You should be able to do what you want. There shouldn't be anybody else telling you what you can and can't do. And at the end of the day, it should be your decision. That's a contradiction. You're saying that, um, you're saying that, hold up, Caleb, Caleb. Oh, keep it coming. Um, you're saying, do what thy will, right? But you're saying that not all saying this are bad. You see, I never said that you're bad. But if you're doing what makes you happy, do what thy will. You were trying to say that you could go kill 20 people. So that, that is in itself bad. So I'm just trying to prove that. Yeah, I'm saying that the model is bad of do what thy will because it, you're essentially opening doors to do what makes you happy, do what makes you feel good. You see, Satan... The reason why there's one lie, one bad thing, is because the devil tells ten troops in one lie. He'll offer you everything that sounds good, but that one lie will destroy you because Satan, he wants to still kill and destroy. But Jesus Christ, he came that you may have life and life in abundance, man. I don't know what pain you're going through, but God, he wants to set you free. Do you have pain in your life, man? I mean, everyone has pain in their lives, but it's not like, I, I, I deal with it. I, I'm a happy guy. Do you want to stop dealing with it and face it and have it removed because I serve that God? That's not possible. There's no way you can just remove all pain from your life. That's not an existence worth living. God said in his word that what is impossible with man is possible with him. You see, we might go through trials and tribulations, but when the God of this... That was good. That was good. That was good. I like that line that he just now gave him about what is possible, man. It's possible with him. Like that. When, when the God of the heavens and the earth, not the God of this world, Satan, but the God and the kings of kings, Jesus Christ, came into my life two years ago when I was smoking weed, when I was on the verge of taking my life. He took away that pain, that pain that I thought was impossible. You see, these brothers right here, they all went through the same thing. We didn't grow up in the church. We were all in darkness, but God, he took away our pain. The pain that we thought was so heavy. I'm here to tell you that it is possible, man. My pain has nothing to do with God. It does because God, he allowed sin into this world. And that is why there's pain and death. You see, you were created as eternal beings. You weren't supposed to die. Us humans, we were created as eternal beings. But the reason why there's sickness, sin, and death is because of Satan. Satan, have you, have you heard of the story of Adam and Eve where they bit from the apple and, and the serpent deceived them? Now, young man, this is what I'm talking about. This is how you minister to people. This is how you minister to people. Not if you throw down that stone, I'll give you $100 because you'll feel lighter. I promise. No, you can't promise. You're paying them to do something. Faith has nothing to do with it. They're thinking about the financial, you know, exchange. And that's it. And that's all. You know what I mean? She, if, in my opinion, she should have done it and got that $100 real quick. So she can go buy a new one because I don't know how much she spent on that one. But I'm thinking that she could have possibly gotten a few more with that hundred dollars. All right. But this right here, the way you're communicating right now about God and about faith, about faith and, um, and, and, and the Bible. This is what I'm talking about.
That's who you follow. Yeah, well, I'm here to tell you that Satan, right, the part of the satanic church who, who deceives you guys, he, he created deception, sin, and death. He's a reason why you feel pain. So, according to the Bible, that's, that's how you see it. Yeah, according to the Word of God. But who's to say that that is truly the Word of God? Because, because, because there's a translation, uh, the King James translation, I'm not sure exactly, but um, like Jesus and Lucifer have a like, pretty much a fist fight. And that, that's like not in any other version of the Bible. So you could go through tons of different translations and find a lot of different things that just don't fit. And that's because nobody can tell me that with 100% with certainty that the Bible is the Word of God. So there is, because the Word of God says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see there's 500 people, more than 500 witnesses, that lived on this planet and saw Jesus Christ die and resurrect from the dead. 500 people. And that is why the testimony is so powerful till this day. That is why you always hear about Jesus Christ, because he really lived on this earth. It's not just a book, it's reality, man. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus, he came to set you free. The same miracles that you read in the Bible, he still does them today. If you want that freedom, man, open your heart to Jesus. You, you talk about miracles, but everybody experiences miracles whether they believe in God or not. So, I, I'm gonna go back to what you were saying before about the witnesses for, um, for the, of God. Where are they now? Where are they now, so? Um, either they're in heaven or hell. Do you believe in heaven or hell? I believe that there is an afterlife, but I have no right to say what it is. I am ignorant. So if you were to die today, would you be okay with going to that place that you don't know? 100%. 100%. What if it was hell fire for eternity? Would you be okay with that? Where the word of God says that there's going to be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Are you okay with going there for eternity? If I happen to be right. If you happen to be right in there is a hell, I don't believe I would be going there. Why? Do you think you're a good person? You may ask this question, man. Would you be happy going there? Because if you don't follow God's commandments and that is the punishment for not doing so, then then you got to answer the question based off that. And I do appreciate how respectful these young men are to each other. I've seen people far up my age, my age, speaking this type of BS to people. And man, I gotta show y'all a video on Instagram. Please remind me. I just is in a, it's, I just now saw it today, and I'm certain that my comment from that video is gonna get me tore up because it's it's not it's not the same crowd that support you know this this channel um this channel right here. It's not. You know what I mean? It's not. Person. Yes. Have you done bad things? Everyone does bad things sometimes. I'm, you know, I'm not uh, an exception to that, but I feel that I always try to be good. I try to make up for what I did wrong. So, so if you've done bad things and you make up for what's wrong, then what makes you a good person if you've done bad things? The good that in the end happens. Okay, so it's by your works. So I'm going to give you an analogy. Let's say you stand in a courtroom, right? And you committed a crime, whether it was murder or stealing, and, and the judge has you in the courtroom. And you're standing before the judge, and you say, Judge, I believe you should let me go because I do, and I make up for my wrongs. Is the judge going to let you go? No, because I hadn't made up for that wrong. But what I'm saying is like... Well, let's say you, let's say you help your brother with his homework. Is that making up for the wrong? You see, that's works. But I'm here to tell you that your works are as filthy rags to God. You're not a good person. I'm not a good person. They're not good people because we not all have person. done bad things. You see, we've, if I told you the worst thing I've done, you wouldn't look at me the same. Okay, I'm not buying that. You are a good person. And if you're going to sit there and represent God, then you need to say you're a good person. Don't say I'm not a good person. He's not a good person. And whoever's recording you, one of your friends are like, I'm not a good person. I know I'm not a good person. Yes, you are. You were made in God's image. All of us was made and in, um, in, in shaped in iniquity and, um, and, and we all was born in sin. We all know that, all right? But that don't mean you're a bad person. What type of person walks around, bro? You know, no. I don't care what Christian actually buys into that right there. I don't believe it. I'm not buying into that. You are not going to tell me that I'm a bad person. You're not. You're not. So at the end of the day, yeah, 
listen, you cannot beat the word of God into anybody. The way you introduce God into people is by showing them love. You lead with love and you're guided by love. And if you're always trying to say, no, you're a bad person. And if you don't do this, then you're going to die and burn in hell forever. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to um, um, scare you into doing it. I'm trying to bribe you into doing it. Um, that didn't work. Let me see what else. Um, ah, I got to be quick on my feet because I want you to dag on buy into it, but you're not. I got to sell it to you. I got to give you something else. Oh, yeah, you're not a good person. Huh? What about that? You're not a good person. You're telling me as a, as a Satan worshiper that I'm speaking to a man who his whole life is um, Christian ministry. But this guy I'm talking to that's of Christian ministry is also not a good person. Then why would I come to your side of the fence? What's the point? You're, you're not a good person. So we're the same. But I'm here to tell you that there's redemption in Jesus Christ. Do you, do you want prayer for anything, man? Um, don't pray for me, but pray for uh, anyone else that is in need of help. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you, bro, that we all need a savior. This life is hard. We can't go through it ourselves. And Jesus came to save you. God bless you, man. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold up. You know what I will I will um I will say this. Something that we used to do when we used to go um out. When we used to go out and we used to, you know, um speak to people about God and we used to sing and we used to um pray for people, those type of things. These type of conversations, I will always well, I used to love these type of conversations. I'm not lying. I used to love them. But that was that's when I was young and dumb filled up with um, all these scriptures and practice and i heard all of these preachers say certain things that resonated with me and it made me feel like i'll be prepared when i'm out there in the world discussing certain things like christianity to other people and um yo i'm gonna tell you something i used to just love to have debates with people about christianity i used to love it especially when i was closest to the, the, the church's form of, you know, being, having a good relationship with God, okay? Whereas right now, I feel like I've never had a closer walk with God than I do right now, okay? It's just, I don't know, you can, you convince people by your walk. Convince people by your walk. Show love to people. And how they decide to move is how they decide to move, okay? Because there are some nations who are still forcing people into religion. And when you when you commit a sin, <laughs> they still punish you as if uh, it's Old Testament um, Bible age. But they would take you outside and they will stone you to death if you do certain things. Now, that's it. We gotta you gotta be mature when you out there, man. Talking about God. But anyway, I, I enjoy that. What did y'all think? I enjoyed it. Y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in the comments below. And, and be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out the door. But make sure that also you reach out to me at, at that website and you ask me about this product that's to my left. Okay? Make sure you do that. Hey, right? I promise you it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I love y'all, man. Support the, support the team. Support the brand. And um, yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.